Okay, so finding the limit rationalizing technique, and I'm going to suggest something to you guys um, that I haven't been able to sell before, but I want to try to get you to buy it as much as you can. What I'd like you to do is always start with direct substitution. I know what's going to, I know part of what's going to happen, but look, start with direct substitution. What am I saying? I'm saying take F of this number. Right? Take F of that number. And you're, I know you're, you're like, Charlie, I get it. It's, it's undefined. But, but maybe there's more to it. Maybe there's more to be found. So what if I make this zero? So this is, I get that that goes, to undo, that goes to undefined. That's that zero right there. But then look, if you put this is zero, zero plus one is one. Square root of one is one. One minus one is zero. This is telltale. This has, is a clue for us. And what the clue is, is that we know that now we know these two things share a factor. So when we get this result by direct substitution, then we know we can do more. Because otherwise, how would you know that you can do more? How would you know what to look for? Okay, so I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I really am. To write that down and to say to yourself, when I'm being asked to take a limit, unless it's daunting, take F of the limit number. Take F of C and see what it gives you. And remember that if it gives you 0 over 0, we have a fact we have a common factor right we have a common factor so because i know we have a common factor i'm going to start trying to work on this and and what does that mean well, i don't know what i'm going to do here is this i'm going to multiply this by the by the conjugate of that so i'm going to multiply this by square root of x plus 1 not plus 1 i'm sorry not minus 1 but plus 1 here and then of course this over itself is equal to 1. So, right, if, if those algebra heads out there go, what, how, why can you do that? Well, this is this something of itself. It's just 1, isn't it? And why am I doing this? Because I'm going to apply difference of squares here. And I know that if I multiply this thing times this thing, right? Look at this. You can do the foil if you want, but it should be pretty straightforward, right? Definitely going to have difference of squares here, right? So we're going to have this thing squared. Well, what is x plus, what's the square root of x plus 1 squared? It's x plus 1, so there's x plus 1 here, isn't it? Right? And then, then lastly, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, right? Now here, look, like, what the hell am I going to do with this? Nothing. You don't have to do anything. Just chill for a second and just let this unfold. Can we agree with this, that this x times this is certainly, well, this x times this stuff, isn't it? x plus 1 here plus 1, right? Right? So, if you just keep looking at this for a second, it gets better, I think, because these parentheses can be satisfied, can't they? So this just turns into this. Look at this. We have x plus 1 minus 1, which is just x, isn't it? Is equal to x. Now let me write it down here so it's still left-hand side. x over x. See what I mean? Let's be clear. This x right here is this x right here, okay? And then times x plus 1 plus 1. And you, maybe right now you're going, what the hell are you doing? Why are you doing this? Well, let's find out what happens now. Let's find out what happens now. x over x is just 1, isn't it? 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus 1, right? But what was the limit we were trying to take here? What was the limit we were trying to take here? And we were trying to take the limit as x goes to 0, right? Remember, just going back to this, this is what was our idea here. So now let's try to take the limit now of 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Now just do some quick math here and ask yourself, that now is there going to be a domain issue here? If x was 0, we'd have... 0 plus 1 is the square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 is equal to 1 half. So there's our limit. So I can hear you. I, I really can. I hear you out there going, you know what, how the, what I have ever known to look at that, and that is such a fair question, and I'm buying it. I'm buying all of that. And I'm saying to you this, how would you have known that you should do something? Well, what if you started with direct substitution? You would have found out quickly through direct substitution that that you are going to get back 0 over 0. And I'm suggesting to you, I'm telling you, that this is a clue. And th 
what is it a clue of? It's a clue to the fact that there's a shared factor up here and that there's more work to be done. And from there, you have to start digging through your algebra to find out what to do. If I got something that back like 1 over 0 or 19 over 0 or negative 42 over 0, I would, I would not be suspicious that, that they shared a factor. All right? Okay. All right. Excellent work. I, I know it's difficult, but this is worth it, and you're going to be great at this, so keep plugging away at it.